Okay, I'm going to continue with David Hume. So I've, I've already had uh, two kind of uh, short uh, discussions of Hume. This is the third one. So Hume, I'm at the point now where we're trying to figure out what uh, Hume believes that all reasoning concerning, concerning matters of fact beyond sim the, simply moving beyond the present. I mean, what I see directly with my eyes, I can know because I, I directly see it. But how do you move into the future? How do you reason about something that you do not see? When you hear not somebody knocking, when you're at, sitting on the couch at home and you hear this, why do you believe that somebody is knocking on the door? You believe in it because of causality. There's nothing in the idea of that of knocking on the door that that means that someone is knocking on the door. The reason we believe that someone is knocking on the door is because we have experienced it in the past. We believe that everything has a cause. If your if your car breaks down, you take it to the mechanic. The mechanic looks at your car and the mechanic says, "Well, you know, uh, there is no there's no cause to uh, your. It just it's just the way it is. There's no cause. You know that that's not true. All things have causes." Hume says well, when you're when you're arguing or reasoning about matters of fact, you always assume cause and effect. Everything about the world is based upon cause and effect. If you get a letter from somebody and it has a stamp from, uh, let's say, from New York, well, you know that that letter has been sent from New York. Um, so we you reason in terms of cause and effect. When your car breaks down, you know that there's some something there's something that's causing it when you hear a knocking at the door something is causing that cause and effect hume says that cause and effect is like cement of the universe it binds everything together all reasoning concern ma concerning matters of fact about the real world outside of our mind is based upon cause and effect that's why you don't put your hand into a fire because you know from experience that putting your hand in a fire will cause, the fire will cause your hand to hurt. You'll get burnt. That's why you don't step in front of cars that are driving down the street because you know from experience that people who step in front of cars will be hurt. All, and that's because we believe in cause and effect. We believe a car will cause you to be harmed. So, okay, so all reason concerning, mat concerning matters of fact is based upon cause and effect. Now, Hume wants to know why do we believe in cause and effect? And the only answer we, it's not, there's nothing, it's not, it, our belief in relate, cause and effect is not based upon relate, relating ideas because there's nothing in the idea of a car hitting you that's going to su uh, suggest that you're going to be hurt. You only know that from experience. There's nothing in the idea of letting go of an apple that suggests it will fall. You know that you believe it will fall because from experience, you believe there's a causal relationship and in this case would be gravity. All reason and concern matters of fact assumes cause and effect. And then he wants to know, well, why, what's that based upon? What is that belief based upon? And the answer to that is experience. The reason we believe in cause and effect is through experience because we, uh, that's where we get the idea from. We get the idea that fire burns through experience. You put your hand in fire and you will get burnt. You let go of a heavy object, it will fall. That's where we get the idea of causality from. Again, Hume says, imagine Adam in the Garden of Eden. If you asked Adam what's going to happen if when I let, go of the, uh, I let go of this apple, Adam will have no idea whatsoever because he has no experience. He has no, I, the, the idea of cause and effect has not even entered his mind. If you ask Adam, Adam, you know, put your hand in that fire, what's going to happen? Adam will have no idea what's going to happen. If you say, Adam, I, I, I'm put this metal up against that metal. Let's say this piece of metal is a magnet. He won't have any idea what's going to happen because he's never seen it. Not only Adam will not have any idea, but we won't either if we've never experienced a magnet. So, how, so why then do we believe in cause and effect? Why do I believe that this apple will fall? Because something what we call a gravity. Why do I believe that? Well, Hume says from experience. Now, then the question is, why do you believe that experience can tell you anything about what's going to happen next, which is in the future? So if I say to you, why do you believe that what's going to happen when I let go of the sapphire, you're going to say it's going to fall. And I say, why do you believe that? And you say, I believe in cause and effect. Well, why do you believe that? And you say, well, from experience. Okay, he will say, well, why... How, why, how, how does experience tell you, give you any, any uh, knowledge about what's going to happen in the future? 
because your experience is always of the past, but Hume is asking something about the future. So what does your knowledge of the past, your experience of the past, why does that tell you anything about what's going to happen in the future? So why do you believe, for example, that if you walk in front of a car, it's, you're going to get hurt? Because, and you say, well, from, because experience. I've seen, you know, what, what cars do, what happens when a car hits a person. And Hume would say to you, yeah, but that's all in the past. I'm asking you about something about the future. The future hasn't happened yet. So why are you bringing up the past? Okay, what are you going to say to that? When I bite into this apple, I know what it's going to taste like. It's not going to taste like a lemon. It's going to taste like an apple. It's not going to taste like an orange. It's not going to taste like a strawberry. It's going to taste like an apple. And he would say, how do you know that? And the only answer to I could say from experience, because I've eaten apples before. I know what apples taste like. But he would say, yeah, but that's in the past. I'm asking about the future. Um, the future hasn't happened yet. So why are you talking about the past? And at that point, uh, the only answer you can give, and Hume says this is what we all do, is we say, well, I believe the future will resemble the past. All knowledge, all reasoning concerning matters of fact, Hume says, beyond simply, you know, sim sim simple perception in the present. All reasoning and beyond simply memory in the past, all reasoning concerning the matters of fact about things which we have not yet experienced, Assume, Hume says, that the future will resemble the past. Now, that idea, there's nothing, there's not, that's not a relation, a necessary connection. There's no necessary connection between those ideas. There's nothing, it's not like saying circles are round, right? The future and the, and the past are, a future, uh, the past experience and future experience are totally different things, totally different ideas. So you cannot connect them up through relations of ideas. The only way you can do it is through is through is through matters of fact is through experience. Well, we've never experienced the future, so why do we believe the future resembles the past? And Hume, if you would say, well, you could say, well, because of experience, it's always resembled. The future is always resembled the past. Last week, for example, what happened on, on Wednesday resembled what happened on Tuesday. When I dropped the apple on Wednesday, resembled what happened when I dropped it on Tuesday. And when I dropped it on Monday. So the, in the past, the future has always resembled the past. But Hume says again, you know, I say, why do you believe in the, that the future resembles the past? And at best, you're going to you're going to appeal to experience again. And then you so say you're appealing to experience. I say, well, why? Why? What does experience have to do with what's going to happen in the future? And then you're going to say the future resembles the past. I'm saying, why do you believe that? And you're saying from experience, why do you believe that experience has anything to say with the futurism of the past? You need to never get out of this. It's a vicious circle. But basically what Hume is saying is that our belief that the future will resemble the past, we cannot justify it through through the Hume's fork. We can't it the we can't justify it as a relation of ideas, and we can't justify it in terms of perception. So our our belief that the future will resemble the past is totally unjustifiable. Um, uh, and so, and, and that is, that, that's Hume's critique of induction. So Hume not only has criticized, has undermined belief in causality. He says, we have no belief, belie we have no reason to believe in causality, nor in that. What I just did there is, is his critique of induction. Let me go over the, his critique of causality, which I haven't made explicit. When you say, when I say, for example, you know, I have a, a fire, a, a fire and a piece of paper. I put the piece of paper in the fire and the fire burns, right? I put, then I do it again, piece of paper in the fire, fire, paper burns. I take a piece of paper, put it in the fire, fire burns. Take a piece of paper, put it in the fire, fire burns. Every time what you have is A is followed by B. Put the paper in fire paper burns, put the paper in fire, burns, and it's just constant repetition. Now, I ask you, why does the paper burn when you put it in fire? Now, you may not know, you know, the, the what a chemist would say, but you would say, well, you know, the fire is causing it to burn. You may not understand exactly what, what the nature of that cause, but you say there, it's causing it. The fire is causing the paper to burn. 
Now, why when I bite into an apple does it taste like an apple? Because it's causing the, it, biting into the apple is going to cause me to taste something. Why does this fall when I look up? Well, there's a cause, but they call it gravity. Everything has a cause. A causes B. A causes B. Hume says, look at where do you see cause? Do you ever see cause here? When I hit this table, you hear a sound. Hit table, sound. Hit table, sound. Hit table, sound. All you, what Hume would say is all you perceive is what he calls constant conjunction. A followed by B. Hit table, sound. Hit table, sound. Hit table, sound. Put fire, put paper in fire, burns. Put paper in fire, burns. You never see causality. You never see causation. What Hume says is you see constant conjunction, this constant repetition. Now, what? so we never see causality. Uh, causality, and again, for Hume, all ideas have to be rooted in sense perception. Causality is a simple idea. Where does that idea come from? It's definitely not a, a relation of ideas. There's nothing in the idea of putting a, a piece of paper in fire that suggests it's going to burn. It's going to have to come from perception, the, the other side of the Hume's fork, perception. But the point that Hume makes is that we never perceive causality. What we perceive is constant conjunction. This goes back to Hume's eye. So that's his refutation of basically what Hume is saying. Our belief in causality has no justification, yet we believe in it. He's not saying we don't believe in it, but we, we can't justify it rationally, nor can our belief in induction be justified. Hume, he put another, at one point he puts it this way. He says, Take, think of an apple. The apple has sensible, sensible qualities. Basically, the qualities, the sensible qualities simply refer to what a, a thing looks like. So the apple has a certain color, if I bite into it, it has a certain taste and so on. Basic, a color, a shape, it's an apple, right? Now, this apple also has, Hume would say it has secret powers. I know that when I bite into this apple, it's going to taste like an apple. It's not going to taste like an lemon. A lemon. It's not going to taste like a banana. It's like, not going to taste like a lemon. I know that when I put a, a piece of paper up to fire, the fire is going to burn the paper. So Hume uses the, the word, he distinguishes between sensible qualities and secret powers. This apple has sensible qualities. And one of the, it has sensible qualities. And then it also has secret powers. The secret power of this apple is, when I, is that when I bite into it, it's going to taste like an apple. On the other hand, if I had an orange here, the orange would have sensible qualities different from the apple. Oranges look different from apples, and yet oranges have a secret power that apples do not have. The secret power that oranges have is that when you bite into an orange, it will taste like an orange. A banana has secret powers that oranges and apples do not have, and bananas also have different sensible qualities. What Hume says is that between the sensible qualities of something, the sensible qualities that, and, and the secret powers of something, uh, there's no connection. I mean, there's no... Uh, there's no connection whatsoever. Uh, there's no, there's nothing in by looking at this apple that's going to tell you what it's going to taste like, or even suggest what it's going to take, taste like. The only way you're going to get an idea what this apple is going to taste like is if you actually taste it. So Hume is saying that we have no access to the secret powers of things. Physicists do not have secret access, for example, to the secret powers of, of electrons and protons and neutrons. Uh, the, the, what they have to do is do experiments, and they, they see what happens. Okay, but there's no connection between the sensible qualities and, and the secret powers. So you're not going to get uh, any suggestion of causality simply through looking at something. Because all objects, just by looking at them, we yield no knowledge whatsoever about the secret, what, what they can actually do, this, what Hume calls secret powers. So basically what Hume has done is he's, he's shown that we have no justification for believing in causality or induction. So why do we believe it? Hume says we believe that this apple will fall, for example. Why? Because of habit, custom. Uh, and that cannot be justified. So ultimately for Hume, all knowledge of all are, are, of, of, of the matters of fact are based upon, not they can't be justified rationally, they're based upon habit, custom. That's a major problem.